Hey everyone, Livy here, back with another video. Uh, kind of weird I'm showing a teapot, right? But guess what? This video, if you haven't seen the title, is my birthday haul. Oh yes, I mean you guys probably already know, I've talked about it a lot on my channel. <laughs> I did a couple of tarot readings kind of surrounded, surrounding my thought process about turning 30, but um, it's Leo season, man. I just had my birthday. At the time of me filming this, it's been some days since, but my birthday was on the 26th and I ended up splurging a lot this year because you know what? I turned 30. That's a big milestone. I do not care. <laughs> so this video will be divided into parts for those who are interested in love hauls and things. Um, I'm going to start with miscellaneous things, which is why I have my teapot here. Um, but then I will move into books that I got because I got hella books and then I'm going to move into decks because there are a few decks in with all this stuff. So let's start with this teapot. Um, there is a reason why I have it, okay? The reason why I bought this cute little pink teapot is because for my birthday I had owned oh, the same design on the back, but yeah. And it's one of those cool ones, by the way, where look... You can put the tea stuff in there. It's so cool. Um, anyways, this is here because I had a beautiful tea party with some of my friends the weekend before my birthday because my birthday was in the middle of the week. Not fun, not great, but I was able to meet with friends and we had a little tea party. Now, they didn't know it was for my birthday because I'm really weird about that kind of thing. I just don't like the attention that it draws, so... I didn't tell them it was for my birthday, but I was like, hey guys, come over for a cute little tea party. And so we did. Um, if I have time, I will insert an image of like some of the stuff that was there. Not everything, but I only took like one photo because I was like making a lot of little bites and I was all over the place and scattered. But it was really fun to, um, to do that, to have the tea party. With the tea party, though, um, besides that, I also, I, I do need to insert an image of this. I also designed my own birthday cake. It's kind of a tradition for me. I love making my own cake. I know that's, like, really weird. Some people just want to be bought. Like, some they want somebody to buy their own cake. But I made my own. It ended up being way too green, though. <laughs> and the frosting ended up being way too green. Because I, um... For the frosting, I use this product called Pondon. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but basically Pondon is like um, used a lot in Malaysian, um, Pacific Island kind of flavors. It's called screw pine, like the English translation, I guess, a screw pine. It's got this very floral, coconutty, vanilla taste. Like if you combine all those things together, that's the flavor of it. But it turns everything you use it with green. So like very bright green. <laughs> but I made my own cake. Um, and my partner also gave me some miscellaneous things that were very cute. Um, he, first off, he got me, he went to the San Diego a little bit after my birthday. He got me this cute bracelet. Now, as you can see, it's like actually broken though. <laughs> broken transit. But it's thought that counts. It's like these cute um, crackled quartz band. It's a little too tight, of course, because it broke. So now it's like really, really microscopic and tiny. But um, thought, again, thought that counts. I do like it. Maybe I can resurrect some of this. I don't know. Even this one, as you can see, it's like slightly broken, but it's still cute. He got me this cute bracelet. Um, I, If I can, I'm also going to insert an image. He also got me like some beautiful flower arrangement and chocolate. So good stuff. And I was very excited about that. I'm going to move the teapot out of the way, though, so it's safe. Um, also in this miscellaneous stuff that I got for my birthday. So those are things like my partner gave me, things I did. Um, the rest of the things you're going to see, oh, except two of the books. So the two of the books were also things my partner got, but I'll show those when it's time. Um, things I got, most of these things I'm going to show are things that I got for myself. And let's talk about these. This is so cute. Okay. So miscellaneous again, 
uh, there's this cool Etsy shop. I'm going to show it here called Saffron Stitched where they have their own, uh, she has her own website. She said, thank you so much. Um, she even has, I guess, an Instagram, really cute store. Um, when I got these two things, it came with this cute little thing. It came with this really cool, like both sides, really cool bookmark. I'm obsessed with bookmarks, so that I know it's really silly and little, but like I got excited by a bookmark. Um, also this really cute, look at it. It's a snail, but the shell is the um, D and D dice, the D twenty. I am, I'm, I was so jazzed when I saw this. But I got these for my birthday because. So this, look at how, look at it, look at how adorable it is. Look at the cat. I have a black cat, so I'm always obsessed. Um, this is the back of it though. It's so beautiful. I got a dice roller, and I got this pouch which I thought it was gonna be more cream colored instead of the silver, but that's fine too. I got this pouch to house, get ready here. I got this pouch to house my D&D, um, &D, my Dungeons and Dragons deck. Yes, I know, um, because I wanna ditch the box. I hate that box, it's just not great. This, I should have really checked. Now I know if I'm going to get another bag by this creator. Um, this is the small or standard, but I actually need a size bigger. So like the medium. But it barely just manages to fit at least the deck itself. And I just love the pattern on this. I love the drawstring. Very nice. But the dice roller, you guys are thinking, why do I need a dice roller? Um, well, one, I haven't done D&D &D in a while, but I like rolling my dice into something that's not loud sounding sometimes i'm like really bothered by loud noises again another um autistic thing i just don't like certain loud noises and also because if you guys will remember i have that rune deck now from um the green glyphs collection by james r eads um and i want to be able to roll the runes as i learn and practice it i want to be able to roll them into this because those dice are really, really heavy and metal. They're not like plastic, they're like metal. So they make a really loud noise. So hence why I got this and it's so cute and I cannot wait for it to use it. Okay, next up is some books. Actually not some, I, I got hella books, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But I'm gonna start with the books that my partner got me. Um, I can see where he's coming from. It's hard to get me books sometimes because I have a lot of books and I know a lot about too many books. Too many fingers in the publishing pie, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. But two books that he got me um, were The Door to Door Bookstore. This is actually, as you can see, it's a translated book. So I think this is books in originally German. Sounds like a cool book though. It's very tiny, so this would be like a quick read. It's cute. I like things about bookstores, so I am excited for this one. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm just like trying to move stuff around as I go. Um, this other book, though, I'm kind of interested in this for sure. This is called In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. Um, If you have not heard of this author, he is also the one who came out with the book The House in the Cerulean Sea. The funny thing about like getting this book from my partner is that I'm actually waiting to read The House on the Cerulean Sea. It's literally on my TBR pile. So if I like that one, I'm gonna be interested to see how much I like In the Lives of Puppets. This book is a little different. Um, I don't wanna go too much into it, but my understanding of this book is that um, there's a house in the middle of nowhere. This guy's living out there. Um, and then it has things about androids, I'm pretty sure. So this one's a little different. This is like the newest release by this author, but I am excited to have more books on my TBR because again, I'm always reading. But besides that, let's get into some books that, um, I bought myself and they're not tarot related. Okay. Cause uh, there's two books that are tarot related in the stack. The others are not tarot related. I'm telling you, see, we're slowly moving into the tarot stuff, okay, with this birthday haul. Yes, I know. 
four books. Why did I need four books? You know what? Shh, it's my birthday. It's fine. <laughs> um, first book here that I got for myself is called House of Hollow. This is a book by Crystal Sutherland. This is, I'm not going to lie, based on the premise of this book, this is not something I would normally go for only because this book, from my understanding, has horror leanings to it. And I'm not usually a horror fan, but the basic premise of this book, so not to dive too much into it, but in case you like horror and would be interested in reading this, is that um, I guess there's three main characters. They're all sisters. And when they were little, they one day went missing in some Scottish small town. And then they came back literally a month later and looked completely different. Like they used to have like dark hair, blue eyes, that whole thing. But then their appearance changed to where all three of them have like really like basically platinum blonde hair and really dark eyes. And they can't remember what the hell happened to them for a whole entire month. Um, and then it flashes forward, I guess, to more modern times where one of the, one of the three sisters goes missing uh, again, and then the other two are trying to find her. I've read a review of this book, or not read a review, I, um, I watched a video where one of my favorite booktubers talked about this book and how much he actually liked it. Um, again, it is from that review, I got the idea that this is probably more horror leaning or it might have some horror elements suspense thriller-esque things so I'll have to see how I do with like triggers and stuff for this but this sounded so freaking interesting that I just had to pick this up um then we have this book this is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. You probably recognize this name because you heard me talking about Vespertine. If you've been around my channel for a while, you've probably heard me talking about Vespertine. I decided to finally pick this book up because I've already liked two of this author's books. I have a feeling I will probably like this one too. And this happens to be the favorite of a lot of her books. Like people tend to like this book the most. This is Sorcery of Thorns. My understanding of this book is that um, there's a girl named Elizabeth. She has to guard a library where, uh, I guess, creatures come out from the books. So she's kind of like the book guardian in a way. And she has to, like, stop all the evil stuff from coming out of these books. Um... But as it says in this last bit, when an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimoire, Elizabeth is accused of treason and she has to turn to her sworn enemy to help her out. This is a standalone and I am just excited to see if I really, really like this one because I think this is more of a romance compared to Vespertine, but... Either way, I like how the author writes, so I'm very, very, very excited to see if I like this one. And then we have two classics. I don't really need to explain these two, but <laughs> I'm going to show what they are. Peter Pan and the Strange Case of Dr. Jenkel and Mr. Hyde and Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is James M. Barry. These are two classics, yes, that I have not read at all. Have not read them. Don't know. I mean, obviously I know the story of Peter Pan and I get the gist of Dr. Jenkel and Mr. Hyde. Um, so I'm not going to go into the plot of these. You guys have heard of these. I'm just excited to be able to read them. There are a lot of classics I still need to read. So these were two that I was most interested in. And Barnes & Noble had these like really cool covers of them. Like especially this Peter Pan one. I'm obsessed with the colors of it. And it's kind of weird because it's like paperback. But then like look it flips open. I'm like what? This is a Union Square & Co. I guess um, versions of these. But I'm really excited to dive into these books. And more books that I got. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start with one of two tarot-related books. This one is Untold Tarot, the, the Lost Art of Reading Ancient Tarots by Kate or Catelyn, because it has an accent there or something. Um, Catelyn Matthews. 
the reason why I got this one before getting a Yoav Bendov or getting Bendov book for Marseille is because I saw this book on Kelly, uh, Kelly Bear's channel. And she said that this is a really good book because she reads a lot of Marseille. She said this is a really good book for people who kind of want to get like the nitty gritty basics before diving way too deep into the meaning of a lot of Marseille related stuff. Like, um, it's more practical. It like tells you how to do certain spreads. It gives you like basics of things and then it gives you images, right? It gives you like keywords as a person, examples, and it's more of like, Here's how to put Marseille into practice immediately if you don't want to dive in yet to the deeper history of it is what it sounded like. So I'm really excited to get into this one. I hope I love this a lot better than freaking um, <laughs> Yodorowsky because otherwise I'm going to be sad and have to give up on Marseille. But I'm excited to get into this. So I really hope I like Untold Tarot. And the other tarot related book I got, I don't even know if it'll fit. Oh, it does. It fits into frame. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, the other book, this one's more silly, but this combines a couple loves here. This is Divine Your Dinner um, by Courtney McBroom and Melinda Lee Holm. This is a tarot book that's not really tarot. It is, but it isn't. It's more a cookbook. And it is a cookbook that utilizes the tarot. So basically, you can, if you have not heard of this book, basically you take whatever tarot deck you want, or this is some of the ways that you can use your book, this book. You, oh, my kitty is crying. Oh no, give me one second, I'm gonna pause. Okay, sorry about that, I had to pause for a second. Um, ways to use this book is basically you draw a card from any tarot deck that you have, you can shuffle, fan them out, draw a card, whatever, and you, whatever card you get, you go to the recipe of the deck. Like, for instance, if you get the Three of Swords, you can make Southern Fried Hot Honey Wings, right? It is so ridiculous, <laughs> but so good. Uh, you guys know me, I love food. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to... Um, use this deck to be honest <laughs> there's some really tasty recipes in here now some people i will say for those who like really standard cookbooks it looks like to me a lot of the food in here is more finger food i'm not gonna say there's not full recipes for like fuller meals in here because i have seen a few but some people's complaints online is that there's more finger food. So this is, would be a really good book if you're trying to figure out how to do like a party menu. The art style is really cool though. Like this art, I wish was a tarot deck, but it's not. If they come out with one though, I would definitely buy it because this is so freaking cool. But yeah, this is just a fun, silly book, but I'm really excited. And I think I might do a thing because you know how I'm trying to show more like kitchen witchery stuff. I might do a thing where I get recipes from this or like pull card, try to do a recipe from this book. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm really excited for this book. And finally, the show, the main show here, the thing that most people come to my channel for, I'm assuming, <laughs> is tarot. What tarot decks did I get for myself? Um, to be honest, money, even despite how many books and things I got, money has been a little tighter these past couple months, uh, June, July. So I, the strategy I went with tarot decks was not to get a tarot deck that's necessarily like really expensive that I normally would want, but more to, if I want a few decks, that I've been interested in that are mass market. So all the decks you're going to see are mass market, which of course means that they're generally cheaper in general. And yeah, let's start with the first one. I'm going to go by size order here. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean in a second. <laughs> like, look at how tiny. Uh, my first deck that I got for my birthday is the Everyday Witch Tarot. And you're probably thinking, what the fuck? You didn't already have this deck. But I really didn't. Um, I was I was someone who was very on the fence about this deck originally. I'm just like, mm, I don't know if I want it. But I kept seeing a lot of people 
talk about this deck on their channels. So I decided, fuck it, I'm gonna get the mini version because you know, you guys know me, I like mini decks, I like smaller ones. And by the way, from Llewellyn, this deck is only $11.99 US. So yeah, pretty cheap to buy like a whole deck, right? I have always been obsessed with these decks backs. They are really cute, really, really, really cute. Um, to see this deck, if you have never seen the Everyday Witch, sorry, give me one second. It's going to be like disorienting, but I'm going to, oop, never mind. Whoop, wrong way. I was going to zoom in even more, but I guess not. But these are the backs. Sorry about that. Um, this is a deck that's been around a while. So obviously I'm not doing a walkthrough. I've already shuffled all of these cards. The reason why I decided to finally take a chance on this deck is that I kept seeing it everywhere. And it's a deck that does interest me. I'm curious to see if I'm one of those people who's going to feel like this deck is too childish and I might want to get rid of it eventually. Um, or if I will keep it as just, you know, again, another travel, travel size deck. There are some cards in this deck I actually really, really love. I love how they show and depict um, the cards at hand. Like even this one for um, teamwork, you know. But there are some cards in this deck, I'm not going to lie, that kind of take me out of it. I kind of wish it had picked a lane and then stuck to it, if that makes any sense. Like, um, one of the cards that tends... I want to see if they'll come up. Hmm, haven't seen it yet. So let me see if I can find it. Like, one of the deck cards in this deck that kind of really takes it out for me happens to be, like, for instance, this one. The Hierophant, they're doing like yoga, but it's like a deck about witches, so it's kind of weird. Like, why is that in there? Um, and then another one that kind of takes it out for me. I mean, people have talked about this already, so I, the things that I'm sharing is not new information, but one of the reasons why I was very hesitant um, to get this deck, for instance, is like even this one kind of. Like, you see she's having like a cocktail, so it looks like more modern-ish. But then you have, like, this that feels very modern, too. Like, again, more yoga pose. But she has, like, cocktails and cupcakes. And I just don't know how I feel about that yet, you know? But despite that, I'm going to see how I like this deck. Again, it's a smaller size. So, and I like the card. Another thing, reason why I got this, particularly in the small size, is because this card stock is pretty much the same as the Line Strider Tarot mini card stock. I, listen, I'm not gonna lie, with newer Llewellyn decks, I do not like their card stock. I don't like the really glossy, um, high gloss and just high, like, it, and again, it also feels high glossy when you touch it, card stock, it's just not for me. So I like this card stock better, hence why I got the small version of this deck instead. So yeah, Everyday Witch. I will see how much I enjoy it. But next in size, this is gonna come as another shocker to a lot of people. If you've been in tarot tube, you're gonna be thinking, what the fuck, you never had this deck either. But I'm gonna explain. I was very much on the fence about getting the Morgan Greer. This is the Morgan Greer. Um, this deck has also been around a while. This is a U.S. Games deck. It does not say the price on here, but most of these are like, they're not even, I think, a full $20 or they're 19 dollars or 95 U.S. This is the tin version. Tin decks are amazing because, again, these can also be travel style decks. The guidebook is, for a travel deck, though, it gives you enough right? It talks about certain stuff. Oh, my kitty is crying again. Give me one second. I think I'm going to feed her and then come back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, this guidebook is kind of small, but it gives you in the back, it gives you like the basics of the Celtic cross. So if you need a spread to use and you're a beginner, and then it gives you like some of the stuff about the cards themselves. Here's the thing. Here's the reason why I have not had this deck until now, okay, is that I am one of those people who was very, very, very much on the fence about 
some of the things in this deck, okay? Um, cardstock, because, you know, I always talk about that a little bit. This cardstock, I'm not going to lie, it's... It's okay. I mean, I'm not oh, I'm not usually impressed by US Games cardstock. That's so mean to say, but I'm not. Um, this cardstock is very close to the White Sage White Sage Tarot's, another US Games tin. I do like this cardstock a little better though because this deck feels slightly smoother in cardstock than this one, especially when it comes to the edges. So this deck, the edges of this deck like when you touch it, is slightly rougher than you would get from that white sage. But anyways, um, this deck is very easy to shuffle. It's a good size, it's small. So again, good travel deck. The reason why I wasn't sure if I ever wanted the Morgan Greer Tarot, I'm not gonna lie, has to do with some of the depictions here, okay? This deck is from, I don't remember if it was the 70s or 60s or whatever, it's like, a, it's a pretty old deck. Coloring is not for everyone. If you don't like the really bright um, colors, you might not like this deck. Just going to be honest here. Oh, the card stock's pretty thin too, so it's fairly easy to shuffle for people who are um, who like to riffle. I don't, but yeah. One of the reasons I don't like this deck, I'm not a fan of these like porn stashes, to be honest. <laughs> this deck, I that was one of the things that kind of stopped me from getting this deck. I'm not a fan of the porn stash look. In general, just I don't care for mustaches most of the time. Beards are different, but like I just don't like just a mustache. It's really weird, but whatever. Um, and my cat is crying again. I don't know why. She... Mocha, you're fine. Sorry, have to do that. Anyways, more stashes. Another reason why I was very on the fence about this deck. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, the pages. I mean, not pages. The um. Core cards, they don't 100% do it for me. I don't, like, how do you really get the vibe of what the cards are about from these weird side silhouettes of people? So not really, not 100% impressed with them, you know? Again, see, more of them, not 100% impressed. Um, Mocha, you're fine. Another reason why, see, I'm not getting any of those. Oh, see, another reason why I wasn't really a fan of this deck Um I don't usually like a lot of nudity in tarot anyways, but the nudity that does exist in this deck, like shows these perfectly colored women, usually lighter hair, um, completely smooth and hairless. It's just not, listen, that's not the reality of the ways of the world. Not everyone is that smooth and hairless and pretty and pale. And I just don't, it, that's what stopped me from getting this deck. That's as silly as that is. It's just like, it's just annoying to see, you know. But at the same time, I am enjoying the colors more when I ignore like some of those weird things. So I'm just glad I have this. Again, this is, this is, would be a good travel deck. Um, could read with most people with this again if you're somebody who knows your audience and knows like not everybody would be a fan of like those stashes and um nudity especially where like the women are like perfect looking this would not be a deck to read for most people but um at the same time i kind of you know enjoy enjoy this so far it's it's been fun I'm not gonna lie so i'm glad i have the morgan greer tarot in the tin added to my collection and the last deck and close to the end of this video now the last deck that i got for my birthday happened to be the new zerner farber tarot this deck um by the way it cost this this version of this jet deck is now published by Schiffer Red Feather. I don't know if it says that on here. Nope, can't find it. Can't find it anywhere on the packaging. Cool. It doesn't say, but it is a Schiffer Red Feather. Um, in US, it only costs about $29.99. So this was the most pricey out of all the decks um, that I purchased for myself for my birthday. This box is also gigantic. It is one of those like um, magnets, but Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to ditch this box. I'm not gonna lie. I hate, I hate big tarot boxes, okay? But I'm gonna push this a little bit. Look at how big this guidebook is. 
this guidebook is thick. It is thick. I think I'm going to end up doing, even though, okay, here's the thing. Zerner Farber, this is not a new deck because people have also known this deck as the Enchanted Tarot and it's got a couple of few names. This newest iteration, because this is like, I don't even know how many years old now. Um, this newest iteration just happens to be called now the Zerner, Zerner Farber, okay? This guidebook, though, was really good. Um, I think the only reason why I'm interested in doing a walkthrough of this deck is because, is, my god, when I went to the back of this book and looked at how many freaking spreads there were, I was like, okay, I, I feel like I need to do a whole video where I just talk about, like, how much this is, because this is, like, great for beginners. Um, but it has a really thick guidebook, which always excites me. This box, another reason why I kind of want to ditch... Oops, my shit's falling all, out over there. Near, another reason why I want to ditch this box is look at this. Look at this. Okay, I have small hands. I have small fingers. I somehow got this out. But um, another time I've tried to grab this deck out of here, uh, I got stuck and I couldn't get all the cards out. So again, I kind of want to ditch this setup because I do not like it. Let me move this box so you guys can actually see the cards. They are still in order. I love, see again, I have, I'm getting a lot of decks this year with edging. Um, this edging is like matte gold. It looks lighter on camera than it is in person. It is a few shades darker in person. I really like the color. I don't know. It's just my early morning lighting in here is not the greatest. But anyways, these are the current backs of this version. For those who like reversibles, you can reverse this. As you can see, it's the same this way as it is this way. Kind of a smart back design, to be honest. It kind of is. Um, cardstock. Because you guys know I'm always talking about cardstock. This cardstock, I'm not going to lie with you, borders on being cardstock I don't like. That cereal box texture, it's very close. It's not the worst offender of cereal box texture. Just going to say it, it's not the worst offender, except the back feels a little worse than the front. The front, for some reason, feels a lot softer. I don't know why the back feels like that. I don't know why it does that. I don't know. <laughs> But this deck is also a good size. This is smaller than your standard tarot, but um, it's long. It's like a longer um, thing and it's thinner. And because I have small hands, look it. <laughs> it fits like in my hand. I'm amazed. Again, this deck is still in order because I want to do a walkthrough, but let's look at it. Like, again, this deck is not new. The, um, when it was called the Enchanted Tarot, it had, it was like really long, I heard, like really long. And the cardstock also was not great. It was like a lot shinier. Um, this is a collage style deck, but it's like also really different and interesting. It has like this quilting. For those people who don't like borders, this won't be the deck for you because every card on this deck has like a different quilted like border. But I'm obsessed with the layout of this. Like, I think the way that the um, titles were put in is perfect. I love the different borders, the different vibes. It's like collage, but it's also not. It's really, it's a really interesting deck. I've had my eye on this for a while, but I didn't like how previous versions of this deck had a much bigger style to it. You know, again, it was like a bigger format. When you have smaller hands, you have to think about like decks that are smaller, you know. Um, and this one is, but it's so beautiful. Just a, I'm obsessed with colors. I can see people who wouldn't like this deck because it is very busy. Like the images on each of the cards is kind of busy. So if you're not someone who likes this kind of like busyness, you probably won't like this. Um, you won't like this deck, <laughs> but I have been eyeing this for a while. So when it finally came out in this version, I decided, fuck it. This is my time. It's my birthday. Let me get a copy of this and see how I like it. Um, I do need to find a different bag for this deck though. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to get a bag for this, but I'll think about it. Um, oh, this moon is so beautiful. I'm obsessed. So yeah, I will probably do a walkthrough of this deck in full just because 
I mean, it's been around a while, but more so I can talk about the guidebook related to this deck. I don't have any other versions of it, so I can't really do a comparison, but um, I'm just excited. I'm excited to get this one, and I love the size, and it's just, it's good shit, man. Good shit. <laughs> oh, you guys can kind of see. There you go. It sparkles a little bit, the edging, but it's matte at the same time, so the edging is really beautiful. And yeah, this was my birthday haul. As you can see, I got a lot of things. Very excited. Um, and yeah, I wanted to share it all with you because there was a lot. So thank you all for watching if you have so far. I will see you again next time. Bye.